Welcome to the Cerebral Edge with strength and conditioning specialist, Coach Chris. Join us for the next 30 minutes as Coach Chris shares ways to improve your health in all areas of your life. Along with his special guests, he strives to give you that cerebral edge to help make you 1% better every day. Now, here's Coach Chris. This is Power Talk 1040 KPPF. Welcome to the show. This show aims to give you the edge to be 1% better every day. Add it all up to 365 days a year, and you're well on your way to a better version of yourself. And on the show today, I got my right-hand man on once again, Kevin Hey, I am from behind the producer desk, and then on the guest mic, and I feel like I'm on my way. He's well on his way yeah. to 100% better. A hundred percent better. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, you know, and we and, and yeah, you know, we just finished with with our workout, and uh, I'm sweating, mm-hmm. and uh, I do feel like uh, steady, slow, but progress. You know, right? So that's good. I mean, I just we were talking about it um, during during the the, the workout uh, that when you start to feel that those muscles that were marshmallows mm-hmm. start to get a little firm right from Man. flab to slab wow yeah yeah you know and it's just a little change but it's like oh i can feel that oh right i can feel that and then you oh you go a little boost of confidence mm-hmm. right it sucked <laughs> right? but you know what i'm gonna come back yeah i'm gonna come and let me tell you what one of the things I noticed is the difference between you going to a gym by yourself mm-hmm. and having someone like you. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a difference. I mean, I can go by myself. I can work out. But to have a guy that sort of gives you that reassurance that I'm supposed to be doing 10 reps, I'm done at six, and you give me an option. You go, you know, we can squeak out these last four or you can do them this way instead. Like you'll say, you're like you know, I, I'm done with push-ups at four. I'm like, dude, I can't do any more. Right. When you're by yourself, you feel guilty, man. You feel like, <sighs> feel like you let yourself down. Yeah. And, and you know, and you try to talk yourself into, yeah, it's okay. I can, I'll do the rest on my knees. I'll, you know, I'll put my knees down. But to have a guy that's right there going, drop your, drop your knees and finish them. Right. That's okay. Drop your knees and finish them. And then. You might even say to yourself, I'm going to finish those four on my knees, but I'm going to add two more Mm -hmm. if I feel like I have it on my knees. Mm -hmm. And then you walk away feeling a heck of a lot better. Right. Uh, Because I do. I I remember going to the gym by myself. And you do slowly slack off. And you do slowly give yourself the okay to slack off. (laughs) But with someone like you... You're not giving me a free pass. Right. But you're also giving me a free pass. Right. You know what I mean? Hypothetically, or or what I mean is the free pass is it's okay to drop to your knees. Do the push-ups from your knees instead of having your knees up now and finish those up. And then when you see me do one or two extra, you're like, hey, exactly, Right? Because that's your job as a coach that gets lost with a lot of people. Your job as a coach is to build people up, not tear them down. Right. Right. So if you only got four and I'm like, God, oh, geez. And I walked away and I, you know, how, how does that make you feel as, as a client or as a, or as a trainee? Right? right. Makes you feel like the same feeling you got in the gym going, oh man, I'm just a loser. I can't do it. Right. But if you all of a sudden you just change things a little bit, give them a little bit of different angle on it. They crank out a few more and then they crank out a few extra on top of that. How does that make you feel? Oh yeah. It feels, I mean, it, it hurts. It sucks. Yeah. I'm not saying <laughs> oh, yeah. it doesn't suck. Um, but believe me, when you're two or three hours later and you feel that tightness in your chest or the tightness in your quads mm-hmm. or whatever, we did a lot of squats today, and I'm going to feel that in my legs later. Right. Uh, and my, my legs might even be weak. Mm-hmm. But anybody who works out knows exactly what I'm talking about. They're going, yeah, I know that. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, but if you haven't worked out for a long time and you've let yourself go mm-hmm. and you're starting to realize, man, if I don't start doing something... I'm going to turn into a little skinny marshmallow man or a real <laughs> fat marshmallow man. Right. And I can't have that. 
Right. I don't care who you are. You got to move those muscles, man. You got to, mm-hmm. you, you got to, you got to give them a challenge. It's the hardest thing about behavior change, right? Is because people always think they're like, I can do this on my own. It's just exercise. It's easy. Right. But it's so easy to let yourself down, isn't it? It is. It's so easy to it go. Is. Ah, it's a little bit too hard today. It right. Is. And that's not to say that there aren't people who can do it themselves. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think we all know everything's somebody individual. who can do it. Yeah. Um, but there's a heck of a lot more out there mm-hmm. who would really benefit from someone like you. Yeah. That that looks at every every client and and looks at their goals and understands them and knows when to stop and when to push a little bit, mm-hmm. when to encourage, and when to have like constructive criticism mm-hmm. that that's delivered the proper way Mm -hmm. and that's what i appreciate yeah absolutely and that's and that goes down to asking questions right so when people come in i always ask questions where they're at physically or i'll give it a little assessment right so i'll sit there and i'll watch people and how they react how they talk right how they how they interact with each other what gets them going what gets them motivated right and that comes down to you know that's what you want to look for if you're trying to pick somebody out Mm-hmm. You want to look for somebody that asks the questions, right? How long has it been since you've worked out, right? What gets you motivated to work out, right? Or um, just watching body language too when you correct, right? Yep. Did they look discouraged, right? Did right. they look encouraged, right. right? When you gave that modification, right? And most of the time when you give people a modification so they can go a little bit further, they get really encouraged instead of being discouraged. Yeah. Right. Which is a huge, huge thing that um, a lot of lots missed in the personal training world and in the strength and conditioning world is uh, looking at people's individuals versus groups of people. Can you think of can you think of somebody that that, you know, that you work with that is on the polar opposite of what you would that you're what you're doing for me? On the polar opposite of what you're doing for you. So, yeah. So I've got I've got people that climb mountains. Right. I've got people that are just uh, really motivated to do it themselves. I have uh, one guy who's a retired bodybuilder, comes to see me. Um, he is super motivated and stuff like that. But when he came to me, I showed him just a few different modifications that tore him up. And it only took me about two sets to do it. And he's used to going in there and, and pounding a lot, right? Mm-hmm. But I looked at his weaknesses. Mm-hmm. And once you start to build work on the weaknesses, they go, <gasps> Right. And then that's that's where you start to get new growth is when people are able to look at the weakness and go, this is what we have to work on. Right. Right. So you've got people that, you know, it's OK for me to go, come on, you've got one more, man. Yeah. Come on. Mm-hmm. And then for folks like me who are trying to just lose the weight, firm up, mm-hmm. get healthier, get to where I can run a fair, decent, decent, uh, mm-hmm. decent amount. Mm-hmm. You know, you can see it in my face. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna have him. I'm gonna have him walk the rest of the way. Well, just walk, Kevin. Stop. Just walk. Mm-hmm. Fast, firm walk. Yeah. Good form. Finish it up that way. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. See, that's 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 beautiful, man. Right. That is beautiful because you know, you even even with within our group, you know, this guy, I can, I can push. Yeah, I can bit. push. Right. I can push, and yeah, and I'll get there. Right. But it's cool that you know the difference. Yeah, so there's like guys like you, and then there's another one uh, that we work out with. His name's Stretch. I can joke with him a lot. Right. You know, some people you can't joke with like that. Right. Like, because right. jo- Stretch will come back and say, Is that all you got? I'm like, Okay, we'll do 20 more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the rest of us, like, Stretch, shut up. Shut up, Stretch, man. You're killing me. You realize us this over is a team here. over here, right? This is a team <laughs> effort, right? <laughs> so you do have those polar opposites. You have the ones that you can really get into and be like, Hey, you got one more. And, and that's the fine line of knowing your client, knowing, um, what motivates and what demotivates your client. Right. Like that's, that's one of the biggest things, but I also got some uh, questions from the cerebral edge email. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. 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 So the first one I got was uh, how often should I rest? Right. How often should you, that's kind of a broad question. Yeah, it is. Every night at about 10 o'clock, go to sleep and wake <laughs> up eight hours later. 
That's simple. <laughs> it's simple. Not everybody does that though. And, <laughs> yeah, and sleep is is very important for right. recovery. But they're talking um, about like rest between reps or but, something. But or? I think that I th- well, I'm going to go out of limb and say this is what they're asking: How long between workouts should I wait to work out again? And it depends, right? It's it's really a depends question, right? Because you have different splits where you can work out five five days a week, and then maybe you do. Maybe you can work out seven days a week if you do like some if you count walking as as working out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you're talking about uh, strength training, if you're talking about going eighty ninety percent on a on a squat or a bench press, right? Um, really hammer it out. Normally on those strength days, I suggest about seventy two hours before you test a max again, mm-hmm. right? So that's how long it takes the nervous system to kind of recover to get back in there. Uh, if you're talking about uh, things like we talked about uh, two weeks ago was uh, BFR training, which mm-hmm. was the blood flow. You could do that every day, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's so low intensity. Mm-hmm. And low in, and, and I don't mean it's not hard. By low intensity, I mean you're using a lot lighter weight and you're sure. doing a ton of reps. Sure. Um, so I hope that – you think I got that covered, I Kev? think so. I think so. I would say that if you do, um, if you do send a question to Coach Chris um, – be as specific as possible. Right. Uh, that's kind of a kind of a broad question. So it sounds to me like it depends on the intensity of the workout, mm-hmm. how much weight's involved, yep. how much it kind of tore you up. I guess is kind of what you're Absolutely. saying. Absolutely, and where you're at um, right. physically. Cool. Okay. Right. So like today, like today's workout, group workout, somebody could probably do that again tomorrow. But if you're right. really out of shape and you're really sore the next day, right? You know, yeah. don't do it. Know your body. Yeah. Know your body. Yeah. See how it feels. Exactly. Uh, next one was how can I increase lean muscle mass? Um, couple things to that question, right? What's, what's one thing I'm saying all the time, Kev, you probably know, you can probably fish it out of the air. Lean muscle mass, protein, baby. Protein, baby. Protein, protein baby. 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 So we talk about my brother-in-law. Yeah. Don, mm-hmm. uh, shoulders are just nothing. He's like, man, my shoulders are like skin and bone. Mm-hmm. He looks at my shoulders and goes, man, you got those big broad shoulders. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were discussing, and then I'll kind of expound on that question. Yeah. How do you build lean muscle? Also, how do you build muscle back up? Because I think it's from him being sedentary for so long. Right. So I think that's kind of the same question. So, so yeah. So, I mean, you have to have a good program, right? Obviously, it's individual to you. Um, lifting heavier weights, you know, squat, bench, deadlift, always great um, ways to build up lean muscle mass. Anything kind of heavy, 8, 12 repetitions is going to get you some good lean muscle mass. You know, you're looking at between 6 sets and, and 15 sets to build muscle mass. Um, but the other thing is what you're doing on your off time, right? Are, are you taking in enough, enough protein, right? That's a huge one I expand upon. And because people really won't eat that much. If, if you want to get to be you know, 170 pounds, 180 pounds lean muscle mass. Don't talk to me unless you're eating 180 grams of protein, right? Especially as we age, because I talked to Kevin about this earlier, was as you age and you get older, protein synthesis in your muscle is harder to produce. So you have to eat more protein per pound as you age because your muscle receptors become less sensitive to protein. And that brings on a whole host of other issues, right? So you, I talked about sarcopenia and things like that, muscle wasting. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is stemming from a lot of uh, non-resistance training, right? People aren't resistance training. Mm-hmm. And then people aren't able to get in enough protein. Then there's also other things like calcium and things like that that they need to get in. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so ultimately it comes down to eating and uh, a good training regimen and good um, and a good pr- program individualized for you because you can look up a cookie cutter workout online and it might not work for you, mm-hmm. whether it be due to pain, right? Or the type of deadlift you're doing might cause pain. So then it's like, okay, well, let's change that up a little bit, right? So instead of doing a straight bar barbell deadlift, try to do trap bar, right? Trap bar is really good. It's one where you stand right in the middle of it. Is that your hands closer together, or so the trap bar is is a is a is a um, piece of equipment that you stand in the middle of it, and there's uh-huh. weights on each side. Yeah, and then you go down, and you grab the handles, and it's a little higher, oh, okay. right? So you're not leaning over as much, uh-huh. and the center of mass is more 
in line with your body versus being out in front. Got it. Right. Got it. Have you Got seen it. those like, yeah. like in the gym yeah. and stuff like mm-hmm. that? So it's where you step into it, you load the plates on the side and come up. And that's a really good viable option for somebody who's going, man, I'm deadlifting all the time and I have back pain all the time. Well, that fixes where the center mass is. Right. So then all of a sudden you're able to do something a little heavier. It's a total body exercise and you're going to be gaining muscle mass off of that with a proper diet, proper sleep, sure. all that stuff. Right. So lean muscle mass. Three things, proper training regimen, right? Proper diet, proper sleep. All right. So let's take a quick break here because when we come back, I really want to get into some more questions that I have from uh, listeners out there. It's really great info. I think it's going to help us out. So we'll be back in just a minute. This is the Cerebral Edge with Coach Chris on Power Talk 1040. We are back on the Cerebral Edge on Power Talk 1040 with Coach Chris and with my guest today, Kevin Hayes, who's normally behind the production booth. Yes, I am. I'm usually over there. I'm now over here now. There's nobody to yell at you from afar. (laughs) I'll yell at you from right here. There you go. So you were saying um, before we went to the break, someone had asked, how do I build lean muscle mass? And First thing you said to me is, Kevin, you already know this. You've heard this a thousand times. What is it? And I went, oh, yeah, it's protein. Mm -hmm. And so you said, don't even talk to me if you want to build lean muscle mass if you're not already having a lot of protein. Right. Uh, Which, of course, means lots of Big Macs. (laughs) So... That's what I... uh, Is that that's not what you mean? That's that's not exactly no. what I okay, mean. Okay, 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 right? cool. So all those people that are in their car driving to big to McDonald's right now, because you gave them permission. If you are in them, the drive through line <laughs> in McDonald's, turn around. <laughs> uh, don't go in there. It's it's a trap. <laughs> so it's funny, right? So when I say stuff like that, that's what people hear a lot of the time. Yes, they do. You know, we were talking about that'd be funny. We, you should compile a list of all the things that you say. <laughs> Versus what they hear. <laughs> versus what they hear, right? <laughs> yeah. A lot of times, like, uh, if, if I'm, like today, like, I was, I tell people good carbohydrates to eat, right? Right. And I'm like, what's carbohydrates? Carbohydrates are sugar, right? right? That's basically what it is. So I'm like, have a good carbohydrate before you come work out. And people will take that as, oh, I should have donuts before I work out. <laughs> <laughs> a jelly donut would be perfect, right? Yeah. Or Doritos. <laughs> Doritos. Yes. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Very good carbohydrate there to work out with. <laughs> um, no, that's not what I mean by getting protein in. So uh, good protein sources that I like have people get in is steak, right? Steak, chicken, chicken. Mm-hmm. is really good. Um, there's some good protein pr- powders out there. Yeah, there's some good protein, some good whey protein. Make sure whey protein isolate is the first ingredient mm-hmm. when you're going to buy a whey protein mm-hmm. um, because there's a lot of crap on the shelves, yes. right? So if yes. you're going to, going to Walmart and you're looking for a protein and uh, you pick up the bag and you look at the ingredient list and the first thing's whey protein concentrate, that means there's a bunch of filler in it. Put it away. Put it away. Back on the shelf. Throw it in the garbage can, man. And so, so once again, okay, I put that up on, back on the shelf. I go to mm-hmm. another product. I pull it up. I'm looking at the ingredients. If the first thing I see is whey protein isolate, is that what you said? Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. Okay. Yep. That's it's going to be more protein. expensive, probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because yeah. then you're getting more more of the um, actual um, uh, molecules of, of protein that you need cool. right versus okay. a lot of filler in there um other thing eggs right so oh, yeah everybody you know gets on the train they're like oh eggs are bad because they have cholesterol on you now that's that's not that's not true no and that that is so funny it's one of those things that i remember a man my doctor saying no eggs no butter mm-hmm. no avocado you got to oh, get God. rid of that stuff yeah and then i went back in like a couple years later and i said what happened man he goes Somehow it changed. Science, whatever. Mm -hmm. But he's like, yeah, go eggs, butter, go. I was like, okay. (laughs) And it was like, it's not me. You know? (laughs) Okay, Doc. Sure. (laughs) Right? It's like we had Doc Grove on here. We talked about metabolic syndrome a little bit and what's the, the cause of that. And, and it's uh, more of people having access to food all the time, 24-7, yes. you know, going and getting whatever. Yep. And a lot of it's simple sugars, right, that spike that insulin all day long, which is, mm-hmm. you know, terrible for your body, terrible for your muscles to take in 
um, uh, sugar and things like that. So if, if you're taking in sugar all the time, guess what happens? Oh yeah. You become a type two diabetic. There right? you go. That's, that's very well, uh, mm-hmm. planned out and, and, and studied mm-hmm. and all that. So my next questions that I have is how much weight should I use for strength training? All right. So for strength. So if you're talking about building maximal strength, um, what you want to do is, is you want to get, of course, the eggs and the steak, right? Mm-hmm. All that stuff, right? Very important. Sleep. Sleep is another very, I know I say, I repeat a lot of things on here. Mm-hmm. It's because they're important. Yes. Right. And I want to really impress upon you of how important that they are, because if you're not doing the right things out of the gym, you're not going to get strong in the gym. Right. Right. So how I start to build strength, maximal strength on, on people is, is I try to stay, you know, Six sets of six is where I first start people off at, right? Because it's it's not a load that's so detrimental to where as soon as I load you up, you're going to break, right? right. You're not so, going to get injured, right? So you have to think of, is this person going to be able to survive on that last set of six? Mm-hmm. Is the weight staying the same for the whole? The weight whole? staying the same. Okay, so the yep. first couple are going to be pretty simple. Yep. And I'll use a method and a technique called step loading sometimes. So yes. that way you never plateau. So basically what happens is you start with a weight, say six by six on the sixth one, you're just dying, right? right maybe right. you don't even get six, right? Maybe, you, yeah, get maybe five. you need help on the last one. Maybe you get five on the last one. Right. So the next week you stay with the same load until you can get six by six across the whole thing. Right. Right. Yeah. And then once you get six by six, maybe you just add two and a half pounds. Or maybe mm-hmm. one and a half pounds. Mm-hmm. And then you go the next week. Okay, how many am I going to get? And then you write down, right? Mm-hmm. I got six on the first one, six on the second one, five on the third, three on the fourth, you know, two or whatever, whatever it is. Now you have a number to beat the next week. Right. So then you go in, you're like, okay, cool. We're going to put the same weight on the bar. And now we're looking at numbers. And you have something that's trackable. And now that's training versus just exercise. Because now you're getting better each week versus just kind of throwing random stuff in there and seeing what sticks. That, and that that is a huge problem with a lot of folks. Mm-hmm. They, It's like, you know, an example is when you finally decide to sit down and talk to a dietitian. Mm-hmm. What's the first thing they tell you? Start logging what you're putting in your mouth. Mm-hmm. And until you start doing that, mm-hmm. you, you, there, you have no information. You have all this gobbledygook in your head. Yep. You don't think about what you ate and you don't remember the five Krispy Kremes you had every day for the last week or whatever. I mean, you remember them, but still, but when you see it, it, it's an eye opener. It's an eye opener and it's a goal and it's confidence. And it's, Mm -hmm. and when you start, start knocking down those goals, man, you feel good. Yeah. And, and you don't know. And, And it's amazing to me when people come in and they go, wow, I never knew what good felt like until I started doing this. That's it. Right. Because people don't really know, realize how much pain they're in, how broken they're in until they start to change those things. And all of a sudden they're, they're eating more protein. They're lifting some weights and all of a sudden they're like, man, I feel so much different. Yep. They're like, I have this weird ache and pain that I've always had. That's just gone. (laughs) Yeah. Oh man, what a beautiful feeling. (laughs) You know, and and it's great when I have people come in and say, like I was working with one guy, uh, last week and, uh, working on other things that are unrelated. Didn't even tell me about this problem, but he goes, it's funny. He goes, I've had an issue in the morning. Every time I wake up, my feet kill me. He's like, it's been for like three years. They just been killing me. Hmm. He goes, this last week I've worked with you. I just, it just, he goes, it just kind of lit up on me on Saturday. I said, I haven't had that foot pain anymore. Right. Wow. Cause we started strengthening. So his, his, his feet or, or up or lower ankles were probably compensating for something. Yeah, obviously. Right. Yeah. Um, compensating or just not very strong. Right. Yeah. Cause, cause a lot yeah. of what I do is as I, I work for strength, with everybody, right. right. Because feet are foundational, right. Totally. To be able to do a deadlift or a squat or a lunge, you have to have a solid base. You have to have a solid foot and solid ankle. So th- that's some of the first things I work anyway, but I did it without even knowing that he mm-hmm. had a foot and ankle problem. Sure. And, and it's funny because when you interview people and you're like, hey, any aches and pains? <laughs> <laughs> totally forget that it's... That it's <laughs> totally you know, forget. Wait, did you say your feet have been hurting for three years? For three years and You that... couldn't have put that on your uh, information <laughs> sheet? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, uh, but yeah, so, but it was really cool because then he came, he's like, man, I have no foot pain whatsoever, which was a, a cool, you know, um, kind of 
add on extra you sure. know, to the workout, right? And yeah. and it makes me feel really good, right? But I'm sure it made him feel a whole lot better. Oh heck yeah. You know? Yeah. Um but that's kind of what I mean. Like people don't really realize what good feels until they feel it. That's right. Because he's been dealing with it three years, so it's become the norm. Yeah. So all of a sudden he doesn't have it and he's like, Woohoo. Yeah. Awesome. Man, dude, these interviews just fly by. They do. Let me tell you. So let's let's recap mm -hmm. the questions that you had. What were they again? So one was how often should I rest, which was kind of vague. That was right? kind of vague, yeah. But, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, but it all depends on the intensity of the workout, right? If it's a real high intense workout, say a one rep max workout, something that really challenges your nervous system, you want 72 hours of rest before you do it again. Um, or if you're really sore the next day, possibly do a light one, but don't really uh, go ham the next day. Right. right. So right. so really take inventory of your body take after inventory. you feel. If yeah. it's not horrible, then you can go again. There's a really great other uh, testing method that you can use, and it's a hand, uh, I think it's called a hand ergometer or whatever, and it measures your grip strength. Mm, okay. So overall, grip strength is a good indicator of where your nervous system's at, if it's ready to go or not. Right, okay. So basically, you get a baseline, and you squeeze three times, you know, get an average. Okay. And then before you work out, squeeze it three times, both hands, see if it's around the same. If it's dropped significantly you're not ready to train hard that day you need to recover a little you need bit to recover a little bit right. more okay um and, and if you're strong or stronger then you can go ham that day right there you go so okay. that's a really good way to to see if you should rest um how should i increase lean muscle mass protein a uh, good uh resistance training program that's tailored to you and I can't impress upon you to you. <laughs> yeah get a hold how, of chris how important that is get a hold of coach chris and we'll give you his info in a second and um, let me see here. And the third one was getting enough sleep. Sleep, very important. Um, how much weight should I use for strength training? And we went over A that. lot. A lot, right? Yes. <laughs> so, so between 80% to 100%. Yeah, so you're really... You're really struggling. Yeah, yeah. You and then and then I think we talked about if something hurts a lot, try a different angle, try a different yep. different exercise perhaps that yep. puts the center of mass in front of you, maybe yep. not quite... Or more towards you, actually. Or more towards you, yeah. possibly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so like, uh, as I talked about deadlifts with a barbell, a lot of times it's out front, switch to a strap bar, so it's right in your, right next to you in your center of mass, and the handles are a little higher, so you're not bending over as far. Right, right, right. right. Thanks for joining me today, Kev. Thank you. It feels good to be on the other side of the table on the mic, but... I think I like it over there better. Like so. it over there a little better? Yeah, so I'll be back over there next week. All right, good. <laughs> uh, my information, you go to CerebralEdgePerformance.com. You can get a hold of me there. There's a little questionnaire you can fill out, message me. I work out at Champion Health Associates, 719-473-7000. I've also got Instagram page, Cerebral Edge Performance. You can email me at CerebralEdge, the number one, at gmail.com. And specific on the questions, you know, good questions today, but yep. you try to keep it as specific as possible because it's a broad subject. Yeah, very broad subject. So um, tailor it more to you, and, and I can give you a better answer. All right, so I'm so glad you joined me here today on the Cerebral Edge. I hope you join me next weekend as well, uh, right here on Power Talk 1040. I have more insight on how we can all achieve that Cerebral Edge goal of making you 1% better every day. I'm Coach Chris. Until next time, stay strong. This has been the Cerebral Edge on KPPF. Have a question for Coach Chris? Email him at CerebralEdge1 at gmail.com. That's CerebralEdge, the number one, at gmail.com. Join us next Saturday at 1 p.m. and Sunday at 10.30 a.m. for another episode of the Cerebral Edge with Coach Chris on Power Talk 1040 KPPF.